ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Addicted to Angling. Now, in this episode, I'm on one of my favorite beaches in Suffolk. I'm on the amazing Dunwich Beach. This beach is renowned for flatfish. Through the winter, it can fish its absolute head off. You can get some great catches from here. Now, as the title of the uh, video suggests, I'm gonna be taking you through how to fish the rolling lead, or plain lead, however you want to call it. This method is deadly. It's an absolute killer method, especially in the summer months or even in the winter for flatfish, but I love using it from now through to the summer. Now I've come to Dunwich Beach because this beach is renowned as being one of the best beaches in Suffolk for fishing for flatfish. Flounders, dabs, the occasional place, they all come out here. And this rod has been out five minutes, literally five minutes. I've only just been setting up my uh, um, camera. Rod tip slackened off and within a couple of minutes, I've got my first flatfish, an absolutely beautiful little flounder. Look at that, hey? That was close in, on the rolling lead. I'm gonna go and get this fish put back and I'll take you through everything, all the way through from the tackle to use, the leads, sometimes the rigs to use, because you can use certain rigs with it to utilize it and make it the best method. And hopefully, after watching this video, you'll be able to go out, and if you've never fished this method before, you'll be able to take some of these tips and you'll be able to go out and absolutely smash it and get yourself some beautiful flatfish like this lovely flounder. I'll see you in a little while. What a way to start the session that was, eh? What a cracking little flounder. Like I say, I haven't caught one for years. To see it come up the beach put a massive smile on my face. Like I say, I haven't been sea fishing for quite a while. Only just started up again recently. You know, it used to be my thing. I used to love my sea fishing. But I rolled into the beach at Dunwich this morning and a smile instantly appeared on my face. I used to fish here a lot. Yeah, you know, I love catching flatties and I love fishing the rolling lead. So for me, this is one of the most, my favorite, most bestest beaches to fish, to target the fish that I like to use on this method. But rolling lead, let's go through the fundamentals of it. Normally when you're sea fishing, nine times out of 10, you'll use a gripper lead. You cast the gripper lead out, it sits, the gripper's bed in, that bait is static, they're flapping around in the tide, but it is not moving. That is not finding any gullies. It is not going across the area you're fishing. And it's basically not searching out the fish. The fish are searching out your bait. Whereas with a rolling lead, you're hunting. You know, you are hunting down them fish. You cast it out and the tide will take your bait along through where you're fishing. And any fish that are in that area should take the bait. Now, it's especially good for flatties because as we all know, Flatties are a very inquisitive fish. They're predatory, they're inquisitive. You know, they like to chase things, they like, like to attack them. Everything from your smallest dabs all the way up to your halibut in Norway, you know. Norway, I've been fishing in Norway. You'll sit there, you'll get a couple of plucks, but it's not until you might start moving and drifting in the tide, that halibut will come up and it will smash, you know. It's the same, I've got another bite straight away. I've got a feeling today is gonna be a hell of a session. That looks more like a dabby type bite to me. That's on lug. We'll leave that, we'll give it five, 10 minutes and we'll come back to it. But rolling leads, yeah. There's a lot of different types of rolling leads. Now, the one you will probably be most used to seeing and most, um, most people will use is a pyramid lead. Now, a pyramid lead is perfect for fishing in any scenario. Um, you can't fish in too big a tides with the rolling lead. I'll tell you that because the tide will just drag it around too much. You need to fish when the tides are not too strong, but that's so there is enough movement in that water to get your bait moving through. Now, a pyramid lead. A pyramid lead is good because it will go out, it will sit on the bottom, and the tide will slowly trundle it. It will go along, it will trickle through in the tide. Sorry, I keep looking up. My tip is going absolutely crazy. I'll leave it. I'll see if I can get a double shot of dabs or flounders. If they're all flounders, Hopefully we'll get a big one, you never know. But yeah, that's a pyramid lead. And that will slowly trundle round in the tide. But as it's trundling round, it will kick up little bits of sand, little bits of uh, sediment on the bottom. And those flatfish will see that and those flatfish will come over to investigate. So that is the pyramid lead. That is uh, probably the most easiest one to use and it works in any type of scenario. Now the next one, you have a lead with fins on it. Now this is very good if you're fishing in an area that's a little bit snaggy. You know, you wanna fish a rolling lead, you wanna fish past the snags, but you cast this out, and because it's got the fins on it, it will still trundle round, it will still do exactly the same, exactly the same within the water, but 
when you bring it back it will lift up and those uh, fins will play in it through the water bringing it up to the surface getting your fish over the snags now the one I'm using today and another one of my favorite ones is a bucket lead now a bucket lead is absolutely spot on you know it's got the ability to move the ability to roll the ability to sit in any little holes it finds it will move freely but because of the shape of it it's not going to roll through the tide you know it's not going to completely get washed out you know this is my favorite one to use i love using bucket leads they search the area they find everything great lead absolutely great lead and as you can see today the leads i'm using are from a brand called takana there are a lot of brands out there don't get me wrong some absolutely fantastic brands but takana are ones that i have used from day dot as soon as they came over to the uk i started to use them they're luminous they're hard wearing i've never had any issues with them at all not sponsored by them but if a company is good and the service is good and you know they do what they're designed to do i will i will i will tell you how good they are so that is the Takana bucket lead, 105 grams. That's what I'm using today on both my rigs. And like I say, you get them in different color colors, different luminosity, uh, you know, they are good leads. Now the next one, it's a plain ball lead. Now this I would only use in very, very light tidal situation. You know, if there's hardly any tide and you want to get the bait moving, I would use a ball lead. That is because it is literally a ball. You know, you cast it out, it's on a swivel, you use it in a high tide or a faster tide that's just gonna wash through you know it's gonna roll through you know not great in massive tide situations but if the tide is really really slow and you want to get some activity the perfect perfect lead to use and the last one you have like a pear type lead yet again Takana I will use these when I'm fishing super super light in low tidal situations you know these are what I normally use for sole fishing, close in, um, super light lines. I will flick these out, that's only 65 grams, as you can see. But they will move in the tide, they will find the fish, but they're perfect for those lighter situations with hardly any tide. And those are the plain leads, you know, there are many other different ones out there, but those are the ones that you will more likely find in the tackle shops. And like I say, you attach them to your rig. That tip is going crazy still. I'll bring that in in a second. You attach them to your rig, flick them out, and like I say, you just have to watch it go through the tide. And yeah, I've got another one, probably a flounder. And um, yeah, you should get the fish. Right, I'm gonna reel this in. In fact, let me just see if I can turn this around and see if I can show you the bite. I don't know if you'll see that. Is it gonna go again? It's slackened off slightly. I'll tell you what, there we go. Look at that, that's another flounder, I reckon. Right, I'm gonna reel this in. I'll leave it with me. Whoa, that is going right round. Right, I'll leave this in. And let's see if I've got anything. It's gotta be another flounder. It's gotta be. Double shot of dabs, lovely. Right, there we go. As I said, the tip was going crazy. And on the lug worm, I've got lug and rag today. But on the lug worm, a double shot of little dabs. Look at them, eh? They're not very big. Dabs in this area, you know, I've had them up to 32 centimeters from here in the past but that's your standard size, tiny little things. I'm gonna get these unhooked, put them back, and then we'll see if we can get some more fish. But so far, that's two cast, three fish. Can't grumble at that at all. 
Right, I'm just gonna give you a quick go through the uh, tackle that I'm using and the way to fish the rolling lead. Rod wise, wise, I'm using a beach ledge room rod. These rods are a lot lighter than your standard UK rods. Um, people, some people call them a continental style rod. The rod itself isn't continental. It's the style of fishing that you do with it. it in theoretically, it is just a fixed spool rod. Real wise, using my standard Yuki, but on it today, I've got eight pound line. Why am I using eight pound line, you may ask? That is crazy for sea fishing. No, it's not. You want lower diameter lines, light lines when fishing the rolling lead because you're fishing heavy lines that could drag in the sea because it's a wider diameter and that tide will pull it through too fast, creating an unnatural movement. This rod has been out five minutes and I'm getting bites again already. This is rag bait on this, I believe. I'm just alternating between rag and lug. I'll show you the bait in a minute. But like I say, it's a thin, light rod, rated up to, I believe, 130 grams or maybe 120 grams. Let's see if that tip goes, because it has been going absolutely insane. Little twitch on there. There's something on there. There is something on there. So I'll just take you through the rig I'm using as well. Standard two hook flapper. Like I say, alternating between uh, rag and lug today. Bucket lead on the bottom. All the components on here are from a company called Seaglow. I've got the match and scratch size two hooks. All the Seaglow components. I was going to put some beads on it, but it doesn't look like I'm going to need them today, to be honest with you. And like I say, the flatties absolutely love it. Flapper in my eyes is one of the best tactics to use when fishing for flatties because it does exactly what it says on the tip. You know, that, that rig flaps. It flaps about in the water and with a uh, rolling lead on it, it pulls it through, creates all that movement. The fish absolutely love it. Now that tip is just twitching a little tiny bit. It was going a little bit crazier a little while ago. But I'm gonna sit back. I'm gonna see if this tip folds around or goes slack and uh, we'll reel it in. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a couple more dabs on there. But let me just give you the sea conditions as well. Look at that, that cannot be any more perfect for um, fishing for flatfish. We're talking about two hours till high tide, flat calm conditions, the flatfish are in close because there's no rolling surf. The plain lead is working perfectly. I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna reel it in in a minute and see if I can get any more fish out of there for you. Well done it today, is proven to be flatfish city. Third cast and another double shot of dabs. That's four dabs, one flounder in three casts. The rolling lead, I'll tell you, it is an absolutely killer method. You know, utilize it, use it. Not the biggest of fish, like I say, but there is bigger dabs here. Hopefully I'll get into something like that a little bit later. I'm hoping for some more flounders because I absolutely love flounders. But whatever bait I'm using, lug or rag, they're both, they're all coming to lug and rag. Not, nothing tipped, no tips on the um, bait itself just flicking it out and within a minute or two that tip is going crazy <laughs> I love it absolutely love it right I'm gonna get these put back and I'll take you through my baits in a minute and go through a little bit more about the rolling lead <laughs> love it free cast five fish awesome Now this cast sitting out there, that rod tip just absolutely pulled around. I'm going to give you a little look at the rod tip and then we'll reel it in. I've got a feeling there's a flounder on it. Little trembles, little trembles. Come on, pull around again. This is on the ragworm. The lug seems to be sort. There we go. Look at that. That's a flounder bite. Right. Watch me reel it in, and let's see what's on there.
Not a flounder, but a little dab. But that is how sensitive this tackle is, you know? I've literally flicked it out and that rod tip was pulling round from that. Stunning little fish, absolutely stunning little fish. I love them. Right, I'm gonna get this rebaited out, cast it out again, we'll flick the other uh, rig out and let's see what comes along. So there we have it, you know, the fish are coming in thick and fast. It's casting it out and it's sitting there and within a few minutes it's tapping away. I'll just take you through the bait I'm using today. They're in sand, so you can't see them very well. But I'm using normal blow lug. Basically what I'll do with these is I'll hook them through the head, down to the tip of the tail, and then I'll just nip the tail off. I'll show you how I hook up a little bit later. And I'm also using your ragworm. Ragworm are an absolutely amazing bait. They give off a lot of acids in the water. You know, they've got really acidic blood in them. You cast them out. The flavour from these, especially if you nip the tail off, which is what I'm doing, flows through the water. They give a lot of movement. The fish absolutely love them. But like I say, this is my favourite style of fishing, you know. I absolutely love it. Coming down here, playing around. Don't get me wrong. Well, I say you can't, I was about to say you can't get little fish on it. But that's a lie. You know, you can pick up any fish on it. There's a video I did a few years ago, if you look, called the Bank Holiday Bass Bonanza. And on that, I was fishing a rolling lead with peeler crab, and I absolutely took the place apart. To be honest with you, and I'm not just saying this, it's probably one of the best bass fishing videos from the shore on the internet. So go check it out, the Bank Holiday Bass Bonanza, you know. It is a fantastic video, if I do say so myself. And there is a very, very special fish caught on that video as well. Now, uh, tide-wise now, we're lapping up. I mean, what's the time? I mean, tide, high, high tide today is about half 12. Hour and a half till high. The fish will keep coming on. I'm hoping over high water. It may slow down a little bit, but I'm pretty sure the flatties will keep feeding. And then, obviously, on the ebb as well, you know, the flatties should stay there. They should keep coming. But I'm getting worried I'm going to run. I say getting worried I'm going to run out of bait. I've got 50 lug, half pound of rag. The tip's going again. There's probably a dab. But the sea is paved with them out there. It must be an absolute dab city out there, you know? Uh, with the occasional flounder mixed in as well. That's a nice bite. That's, don't get me wrong, like I say, I'm using a very light rod, so the bites do look better than what they fish are sometimes. But that just slowly pulled around. Now, what I don't really want to do today is hook into a form back. Because, like I say, I'm only using eight pound line. Um, there is form backs coming out here at the minute. I might pick up a little one. You never know. You do never know. But I'm not smacking it out. I'm fishing it around about 50 to 60 yards, just plopping it out on the inside because I know here there's a few little gullies and I know with that lead trundling across, it's going to drop into the gullies and that's where them dabs will be sitting, which is probably why I'm picking a few up. But like I say, it's not even 11 o'clock yet and I'm having some fish. So happy days. I will... Uh, probably have a little bite to eat in a second and I'll come back to you in a minute if I've got a fish and if I haven't got a fish we'll have a lovely little chat a bit some more about the rolling leg tactic boom is all I can say I'm taking this place apart it is fantastic fishing it really is like I say they're not massive but to me I love catching dabs another double shot I think that's seven dabs and one flounder so far Lovely little fish on the light tackle. They are so much fun. So much fun. Now, I don't know if you can see that. I'll just show you how to tell a dab. When you catch a flat fish as a dab, if you look on the lateral line, which is there, dabs will have a C shape on the lateral line. It comes from behind the gills, it goes out, and then it comes back in. That is the most distinguishable way to tell a dab. Now I'm going to get these little beauties unhooked, throw them back, and uh, <laughs> just crack on. Like I say, fantastic fishing, absolutely beautiful, and what a day for it. It's absolutely stunning. Done it, Che. What a place.
Right, the fishing as we're getting near high tide has completely dried up. I'll just put that next rod a bit further out because my thinking is fishing's dried up, we're getting near slack water, those fish may have moved out a little bit further, just come away from the edge of the beach. Maybe because there's no tide run, or maybe just because you know they know it's getting near slack water. But like I say, bites are dried up. And then sit me sitting there thinking, well, I ain't too bothered. At least I haven't had a whiting. And there it is. Hopefully, it's not going to be too crazy with these. Hopefully, they don't turn up. I'm not casting out and getting massive bites from whiting, as in loads of them. So hopefully, it's just either a rogue one or they're going to turn up at high and disappear again. But yeah, like I say, it has dried up. I'm now going to start searching the fish, front, you know, further out, closer in. Just keep going round. There we go. I've got a rattle already further out. That looks more like a flatty rattle. And um, yeah, see if I can pick some more off. But the method is working absolutely superbly. As I said at the beginning of the video, killer method. Absolutely killer method. Right, I'm going to get this white and unhooked. I'm going to throw him back. I'm going to sit back over high water and see if it picks up again as the ebb starts flowing. Oh, look. Remember what I said in that last little clip about putting it out further to find the fish? Straight away, I found one further out. They have moved out because the tide is slackening off. I'm going to get this little cracker put back and I'll get another bait out. Well, it's turning out to be quite a good session, to be honest with you. A few dabs so far. I think I've had eight dabs, one flounder, one whiten. And I've only been here a couple of hours, so I can't really grumble at that at all. Now, it's not for everyone's cup of tea. You know, a lot of people out there just like to go out and catch big fish. But where times like this, when, you know, fishing can be quite hard. We're in that transgression period at the minute between um, winter into spring. You know, species will disappear, species will come in. But sometimes, you know, the species won't come in till later. And sometimes species will go away, which means that you haven't got many fish to target. So when you haven't got many fish to target and you want to bite, this is the perfect time to do it. Fish the rolling lead. But another firm thing about fishing the rolling lead is, obviously, as you can imagine, that lead moves. So you cast out in a straight line, yeah? So you cast out, that's your lead, that's the beach. You want that lead to go across like that. You don't want that lead arcing in like that. If you keep a tight line to your rig, obviously the tightness of the tip to the lead that will swing it in you know and you won't be fishing at the same distance you are and if the tide's running hard before you know it you're fishing under your feet which you know it can be quite good but in reality you want that like i say that's your lead you want that lead to go like that so when you cast out do not tighten right up tight you know don't have your tip round like that tight to your lead leave it fairly slack and as that tip, you know, you'll see the lead moving because the tip will slowly go over and it'll bounce around like that as the lead's moving. Now, as it does that, just loosen the drag off, pull a little bit of line off to bring your tip back straight. Because if that tip's straight, that tide is moving it across perfectly parallel to the beach at the distance you've cast at. I've seen it before. I've made the mistake, rookie mistake years ago, fishing the rolling lead and I was like watching it and the tip was going around and I was like, oh, brilliant. Go to reel in and the line's down the beach and you're reeling it in along the beach probably about 15 yards out where well, there will be fish there but you really want to be fishing at that distance you've cast so like i say don't tighten right up to it leave it a little bit slack and as your tip bows round and tightens up to the lead just pull a little bit of line off the drag it, it works trust me it really really works but i think it's high tide now like i say bites have really dried up i've found some more dabs at distance 
but I think once the ebb starts, give it half an hour into the ebb, I'll see how fast it starts running through. Might have to bring it in a bit closer, because fishing out a little way, the tide will be stronger. I want to fish just on the edge of that tide, because flatties, they don't want to be sitting in that tide. They'll sit right on the edge of it, where it starts to slacken off a little bit closer in. All the food particles, as that tide rushes past, will slow down as they come in and they'll drop to the bottom and that's where them fish will be you know they'll be smashing them little particles of food that are being bought past by the time but i think i'm going to have a drink have something to eat sit back relax and see if this fishing takes off again right the ebb tide is now in full swing it's chugging through quite a distance it's chugging through quite a lot i put a rod out a little while ago and it came through quite quick so yet again i'm dropping it in close and I've just picked off another little dab. Pretty little fish. I mean, that one's got a little bit of damage there. I don't know if you can see that. But he's still going strong. You know, he's, he's not bleeding out of it or anything like that. So it is an old wound. But yeah, like I say, ebb tides come on. I'm hoping once this slackens off, the fish will start biting again. Like I say, once that tide starts flowing, all them flatfish will hunker down to the bottom and they'll sit there and they'll wait until the tide has stopped absolutely nailing it through. But let's crack on. Let's see if we can get some more dabs on camera for you. I'd really love another flounder. That is what I really, really would like to see, but uh, we'll see what happens. Well, that ebb is still tunking through. So what I've done is I've had a couple of casts. I brought it in a little bit closer until that lead is not pulling around faster in the tide. I'm just sitting on the edge of it. And there we go. Little sea locust and another little dab perfectly perfectly formed little dabs you know don't get me wrong some of them have got the green fungal um, disease that you see quite normally now on dabs it's not harmless or anything like that I believe it is just a fungal um, disease that obviously changed the pigmentation of their skin but he is a perfectly formed little bugger look at the other side of him look how fat his little belly is look see his belly just there He's feeding up on God knows what out there, probably little shrimps, prawns, little worms, just little bits of food that are floating past. But I've just flicked out another uh, two lugworm. These were on rag. I'm just literally alternating every cast between lugworm and ragworm. It's all catch them. Just going to work my way through my worms. Go through this ebb tide, wait till it slackens off, see if it picks up. I probably won't stay much later than three o'clock in the afternoon, to be honest with you. But the fish are still here, so I'm going to keep plugging away. The rolling lead, eh? It definitely works, as you can see. Right, that tip keeps quivering away. I've had a couple more double shots of dabs and whiting, but I don't want to keep coming on camera and showing you all the dabs and whiting that I'm catching. But, like I say, that tip is now trembling away. I'm going to reel it in. Let's see if I've got another fish on there. And there you have it. The ebb tide is starting to prove a little bit more annoying, to be honest with you, because these have come through on the ebb tide. But the flatties are still there. Like I say, not massive, but good sport. Still getting quite a few. Like I say, that tide is still going through quite fast as well. But fishing on the edge of the tide, and I'm still picking the fish off. Still time for a flounder. Like I said, I'd love to get another one really would but so far i'm in double figures for dabs so i haven't quite checked the marking down every time i catch one and i think this is about my fifth white and plus that flounder as well so there you go i've got another tap on the rod already just literally flicked it back out let's keep going let's see how we uh how this session ends up well it's turned into speed fishing now i'm averaging eight minutes of cast could have left this out to see if i got a double shot but this one was really making that tip rattle. So I uh, 
reeled it in. Lovely little dab. Can you see what I mean about the green pigmentation on the skin? Like I say, I believe it's like a fungal, not an infection as such, like a fungal disease. I might be wrong, but that's what I've always been led to believe. It don't affect the fish at all. They all seem healthy. It just changes the pigmentation of the skin. That's all it is. But this, like, this cast I've just done, I've put it out a bit further. I'm sitting right in the tide now. Um, there's a, quite a bow in the rod. I know you shouldn't do it, or I said you shouldn't do it while you're fishing the rolling lead. But I'm tempted to go out there, you know, just to see if there's anything better sitting out in the actual tide run. See if there's any doggies out there. See if there's any bigger whiting, bigger dabs. And see if there's any flounders sitting out there as well. But we'll see. Anyway, that's another one. I think that's about number 15 or 16 for the dabs. Uh, I think I've had about six or seven whiting and one flounder so far. So all in all, a good session. Ain't got long left, probably got about an hour. The rolling lead, like I say, I don't know how, many, how many times I say it, it's my favorite method to fish and it does produce the goods. So there you go, another flounder, another flounder, sorry, another dab, don't know why I said flounder. I've got flounders on the brain at the minute. Gonna put him back and see if this cast out into the tidal flow with some lug on there produces the goods. Right, well the time has come for that fateful last cast. I've had a few more dabs, a few more whiting. I'm gonna put this out, give this 10 minutes, see if anything comes and takes it. Hopefully this last cast will produce a couple more dabs. Let's see what happens. You can see the tide is now ebbing completely out. You know, we are getting quite close to midway down low tide, I'd have said. Well, yeah, midway down to low tide. Um, the tidal run has slowed right down. The fish are back on the feed. Let's get this last one out. Let's see what happens. the last cast in and that is whiting number nine but I finished off that is where are you that is dab number 20 so nine whiting 20 dabs and one flounder all in all a very very good session now as you can probably see I don't know if you can or not it's raining I'm now gonna pack up go home get some dinner Relax with the missus tonight. And like I say, <laughs> the rolling lead, eh? What a fantastic method to use. It really does work. You get loads and loads of fish, you know? You really, really do. This time of year, or even in the summer, once the place are about for the place, it's a killer method. And I just hope that this uh, video has helped you. If you haven't tried it before, go and give it a go. Um, if it's something that you use all the time, then I'm, I hope you just really enjoyed watching the video itself. But please give it a like, share on um, social media, and if you really want to, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost a thing. This dab's now going back. My stuff's going to get packed away, and I'm going to go and get in the dry. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you by the water very soon.